welcome to another OG Duffy versus video. Now we've got a great one for you this week. Uh, it was a great four player co-op uh, arcade game from back in the day, 1985 by Atari. It is the one and only Gauntlet. Now, before we get into this, as always, um, and do my verses and my verdict and all that sort of stuff, here's a little brief history for you all about the uh, about the backstory of this game, how it come about, and a, a little bit of information about it and all that sort of stuff. Uh, this is by no means a deep, in-depth, historical documentary. It's just a, a nice way of setting the tone for the game. So here we go, a little backstory here into how Gauntlet came into fruition. The new fantasy adventure from Atari Games. The most fun a quarter can buy. Ed Log worked for Atari, and uh, before he eventually cut round to developing Gauntlet, he did such classics like Asteroids and Centipede, so the guy had good credibility. Um, one day, watching his son, the story goes, playing Dungeons and Dragons with his friends, and uh, this inspired him, and uh, he started thinking about a new video game, and this was when the original concept of Gauntlet was born. Now, I don't know about you guys, but growing up and around this time, Dungeons and Dragons was huge, and it was a great, great thing. I mean, we had uh, the, the games, the miniatures, and all that sort of stuff, and I was a big fan of it. But we also had the uh, the TV show, the cartoon. That was that was great. You'd get home from school and sit and watch that, and it was it was brilliant. So, to be honest, Dungeons and Dragons and role playing games in general were were sort of just new and really starting to peak at this time. So it was a it was a great time to do a dungeon crawling game. Now this wasn't Atari's first soiree into dungeon crawlers. Here you can see the game Dandy which was released on the Atari 8-bit computer system um, and it was um, bought out a few years before Gauntlet so this was originally the, a very similar style of play um, obviously graphically and everything else nowhere near as good but uh, actually did very well and uh, this was also released on 8-bit systems uh, back in the day so it might be a game we look at in the future dandy because uh, my recollection of owning it on the ZX Spectrum was rather good if I recall. So Gauntlet eventually hit the streets in 1985 November and uh, was a very very good seller. Uh, shifted over 7,000 cabs uh, to kick things off. Then in June 86 they released a two-player version. I suppose the idea behind this was to incorporate and get a bit more revenue in. Um, but personally, my favourite's always been the four-player cab. It's just a, it's a thing of beauty. I mean, look at the side art on that. It's lovely. Now, you could choose four characters, as I said earlier. The first character was the warrior, which was called Thor. Very original name there. Uh, and his special ability was he had the strongest hand combat. Then you had the wizard, who had powerful magic. And obviously, he was called Merlin, because why not? Uh, then you had the Valkyrie, and she had the best armor. Um, and then finally, you had Elf, who was known as Questor, was his name. And he had the fastest movement. And really, I did like playing Elf. It was probably my go-to of all of them. So that concludes the brief look into the slight history of Gauntlet there. I could go a lot deeper, but time is of the essence because we must go look at the arcade version next and obviously the other systems. Hope you enjoyed that. As I say, not too in-depth, just to give you a little taster and feel of the game before we get into it. Okay, so for the verses this week, we're going to be looking at the usual suspects. We've got the Amstrad CPC, the uh, the Commodore 64, uh, and the ZX Spectrum, all showing you this gauntlet goodness. And then, after that, we're going to take a quick look at the uh, Sega Master System and the Nintendo Entertainment System. And also, we'll have a quick look also at the uh, the Sega Mega Drive version as well, which is, uh, or, or the Genesis, if you're a North American friend tuning in from elsewhere.
So, without further ado, as always, we're going to get into it. We're going to look at the arcade version first, all right? Uh, great game, etc. You're going to love this, honestly, because I did. It brought back so many memories replaying this, all right? Um, if you don't already do so, please hit that subscribe button. Makes me happy. You guys know that. And let me know in the comments your thoughts, your memories, all that good stuff about Gauntlet from Atari. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Let's do it right now. Come on, arcade version Gauntlet. Okay, this is Gauntlet 1985 by Atari Games. I'm going to do 700 health, that's all on the arcade version. When you played this on the home systems, it'll give you 2000 health. Uh, press my start button. Well done. And there we go, I've started as Warrior. I could have chose Valkyrie, Wizard, or Elf. Uh, each have their own attributes. Uh, with this guy, you can you throw axes and uh, you're a bit stronger than the general other players. So you have to kill the different monsters as you find them. Basically, you're making your way around the dungeon uh, with you and up to four friends, or three friends, should I say. A total of four players were allowed uh, on the arcade version. And this game was, was, was really good. Well, it was excellent. Graphically, it was good. Oh, um, the sound uh, was particularly warrior good. Warrior is about to die. Especially the, the sound effects. And you'd make your way through uh, killing the enemies, and you'd have to sort of head for the exit of each uh, d a dungeon, and it'd sing out to a different part of the dungeon. Save potions for later use. Right, so this one, I'm going to try and show the Warrior and all the versions. Uh, so this is obviously the arcade, and as you can see, we've got a few enemies now. I haven't got long to go, long to live. So here we go. Let's have a look at the... Uh, that's how the potions work, all right? So they zap all the enemies that are on screen at that time, but doesn't kill their little uh, spawn spots, the little houses and things they come out of, like there. So you have to shoot them to stop further enemies coming out. Now you can collect food, you collect gold, you collect treasure. Obviously you collect food, it gives you more, um, more, more health. And as you go through playing... Uh, it was just really good fun. Graphically, it was great. And as you can see, it was pucker. Ooh, and I remember warrior. when this was He's released. About for the... to die. I'm about to die. Let's kill him off. Ooh. So there you go. That is Gauntlet for the arcade. So we're going to go take a look at the 8-bit systems now. And uh, and then we'll have a look at some others as well. Just thrown in at the end. But it's only the 8-bit systems we're going to judge. Gauntlet 64 version first. Um... Graphically, weren't too bad. It was nice and colourful. The sprites were, were quite small, but uh, worked well. Um, bit of depth to the walls there, but as you can see on the floor areas, just colours really, which is uh, good. But what was nice about this, it scrolled really well. And when the screen got busy and stuff, there was no slowdown. Because uh, let's be honest, an awful lot of enemies can appear on the screen at any one time. A uh, two player version only, this one. But overall, very good. Next up, we've got the Amstrad. Now, I think the first thing we'll notice on this one is the colours. It's very bright, um, as normal, but it doesn't scroll as well as the C64 version. But it weren't too bad. It played quite well. Um, stuck to the arcade original, um, which with the levels and stuff, which is good, as all these 8-bit systems did. Um, nice and bright. Um, not bad overall. I mean, the sounds were very basic. There's no real music playing throughout the game anyway. And um, again, two player only on this one. Um, very few systems. Well, only one system had a four player option, and we'll come to that a bit later. So that's the Amstrad. Next up, the ZX Spectrum. So here we go. This is the Spectrum version. As you can see, quite basic sort of graphics, sprites wise, and stuff to be expected. Um, the the floors of all these dungeons are all just jet black like this um so as you make your way through it, it, it no real change there but as the you know levels that get busier to be honest i think the, the spectrum didn't do a bad job of this really um i remember owning this and i was pleased with it i was i think you'd be pleased with all of the 8-bit systems to be fair um i don't think you'd be disappointed if you're a fan of gauntlet on the arcade and you got this on your, your your home system i think you'd be quite impressed um i know i was um and this was it i mean as you can see the spectrum kept the busyness and stuff so good effort 
Now this is the uh, NES version, and as you can notice, it doesn't resemble the arcade. It's very similar, you can select the uh, four same characters, but it had 100 levels still, but all were completely redesigned, and this played very differently to the arcade. It was more like a role-playing game, you had 100 levels to do, and the idea was you player, you'd have to work through to a quest to get to the secret orb of all things uh, at the end. And to do this, you had to collect um, certain clues and hints and stuff in password rooms, to part, parts of the password. So uh, another good thing with this, you could save it as you went, it had like a password save system. So you collect parts of the password, you get down to the final level and uh, never done it, never completed this. But if you have, let us know in the comments. And so I assume you don't have to enter the password that you've discovered throughout your quest to complete your your mission so to speak um so very original in the way it played because it was like i say so hats off to them for doing a very different thing with it but it wasn't the arcade version So this is the Sega Master System, and obviously the first thing you know is straight away it plays quite fast. This it was it was good speed, uh, graphically was pretty good, uh, and as you can notice, it's um it sticks to the arcade original, which is what we're comparing today. So uh, very well done here, a good effort from um, from the Master System. Graphically was good, and let's be honest, if I'd have had this on my Master System, being a Gauntlet fan as I was, I wouldn't be too uh, unhappy with this. So all in a very good effort. Well done, Sega. And finally, we have the Master System version. Now, strangely, they bought this out and they called it Gauntlet 4. Now, as you can see, there were several modes. You had arcade, quest mode, and that sort of stuff. So, it had a bit of original originality there. But although they called it Gauntlet 4, it was still the original arcade game. So, uh, the idea behind the 4 was it was the only version that you could play four players with simult simultaneously at the time. Um, so, that's why it got the title as Gauntlet 4. So all in all, as you can see, graphically, sound and everything, this was very, very close to the arcade. Um, so a brilliant, brilliant effort on this with the Mega Drive Stroke Genesis. Um, you wouldn't be unhappy with this. I haven't played the quest mode. I should have gave it a quick try out really before I was doing this. But, uh, but I was just comparing the arcade version. So this is probably the most accurate of the lot of the time. So great effort again to Sega. Wow, what a game, honestly, a, a brilliant game, and one I've really enjoyed touching on this week, because uh brought back so many memories for me, really, uh, and it was great revisiting it, especially on the 8 bits, uh, which comes to the verdict. Now, before I give the verdict, let me know in your comments. Don't be hating on the video, though, if your system doesn't win, but do let me know in the comments why. Why you agree or disagree with me. Uh, and any memories you guys have got of this. Please do share them. Because it, it was such a, an awesome game for its time. Okay. And if you don't already do so. Hit that subscribe button. Because it makes me a happy man. So let's get into it. Right. 8-bit versions first. Now, both, uh, all three of these were, 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 were pretty good. You could tell that it was Gauntlet on all three, and uh, it converted well, I felt, to the home systems of the day. But in third position, because someone has to come third after all, I'm giving it to the ZX Spectrum. Now, I had fond memories of this because I, I got it for Christmas one year and I, I, I managed to sneak it out of me, uh, off my mum a bit earlier just to check it works, you know? That old chestnut, it worked. Uh, and uh, so I've got fond memories of it. But in terms of playability, the Amstrad version comes second and it just played, it looked a bit more colourful and stuff. But the winner has to go to the Commodore 64. Um, it was bright. It played well. They kept loads of busyness going on on the screen, and it it converted really well. You knew you were playing Gauntlet, and uh, not just that. The scrolling on this thing was really smooth. So a great job and a great win for the Commodore 64 this week. Okay, so well done, C64. Now, 8-bit systems or the 8-bit console, should we say? So. For this, I'm going to give it straight. It's between, obviously, the Nintendo NES and the, the Master System. But I'm going to give it straight to the Master System because, as you saw, the NES version is was not an arcade um, conversion at all. But what I did like about the NES version, because I've never played it until now, I like the way that, that it's created a whole new game around 
the ethos of the, of the Gauntlet concept. So that was really clever, and it was like a like an ongoing sort of a bit of an RPG, if you like, you know, a bit arcadey RPG. So respect to them, but I'm going to give it to the Sega Master System because obviously that was uh, that stuck to the the coin up original so it goes to the sega master system there uh, now we, we had a quick look right at the end there on the uh, the sega uh, mega drive mega drive version was pretty awesome i mean it was called gauntlet 4 as we say because it was the only system out of all of them that could have four players simultaneously no other home system had that and it converted brilliantly it was a really really well done um conversion so Good job, Mega Drive Genesis. Superb stuff. Um, so, that concludes this Versus video. As always, if there's a video you'd like to see or a video game you'd like me to do in the future in my Versus, do drop me in the comments. I've got a massive long list from you guys. And it, they're brilliant. I've got some real absolutely awesome uh, suggestions so do keep them coming also don't be hating don't be hating if i haven't chose the spectrum this week or the amstrad and you really wanted that version to win but do share your memories all right and let me know in the comments uh, how you remember these games did you play it were you lucky enough to play it in the arcade with friends and do the co-op because honestly it was brilliant it was a cooperative play it was superb on this okay so i've been og duffy thanks for watching and as always hit that subscribe button and uh, hey as usual, I'm out. If you watch the video and you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe for more great videos. Thanks for watching.